as it is here. Yeah, but of course, then Amy's daughter lives uh, about uh, 200 miles north <laughs> in Minnesota, which is, uh, you know, like, uh, I don't know if you ever watched uh, 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 Rocky and Bullwinkle. You know, I mean, they were, it was a cartoon. No, it wasn't. Oh, okay. Well, they lived in Frostbite Falls, Minnesota. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty good description of uh, where we where we are. So we're looking forward to that. I mean, we we go down to uh, we we stay. Uh, there's a a place. It's it's not that expensive, but it's right on the beach. And, and uh, I I it's not a very nice place. It's sort of run down, but you know I just leave the uh, doors open and listen to the ocean all night. Maybe yeah. maybe while I'm down there, I'll, I'll I can show it on the screen on the video. But anyway, uh, Charles uh, is feeling a little more better today, and so uh, if you, either you or, or or Charles, why don't you share a dream or cat or Dawn, if you guys have dreams too, that's great. Go ahead, Charles. Why don't you uh, give us one? Uh, and now it's kind of interesting to me, Charles, that you're back in St. Louis. You know, from he was working for the FedEx uh, as a contractor, and down in New Orleans, in uh, you know, which is way south, uh, you know, on the Gulf of Mexico, and uh, then he moved back to St. Louis, and now he's saying he hasn't had any dreams that he remembers so That's yeah the- i um i know i had one the other night and then um i'm you know sometimes i Ooh. wake up from my dream oh and, and i email myself a dream and it, i'm so out of it that i don't even remember that i did it and so now i'm looking in my e- inbox and i have a bunch of unread dream emails <laughs> Isn't that fun? Well, now Dawn uh, sent me an email, and I, I know I saw it. Uh, yeah, let me see. She had a dream. Yeah, you know, Dawn. Uh, okay, it's colorful moon. That's it uh, on January twelfth that you sent it. Yeah, I don't know why I missed that email. Okay, so let's. Uh, I'm going to put it in the thing. Uh, well. We'll do the colorful moons. Uh, okay. Now, here you are going to love the dawn dreams. Uh, they are uh, are very good. Okay. Well, Charles, why don't we start out with this dawn dream? As long as she just sent it, and then just reminded me that I had not seen it. I don't know why I missed it. I mean, I did see it. But I think I was distracted and okay, let me put it in here. Paste. Here we go. Okay, then something is going on. Just a second. Okay. No, I, I mean it's just my fault. Uh, I uh, I did see it. I wanted to read it, and then suddenly something came up and I lost it. Okay, all right, let's see, all right, well, let me just put the uh, second paragraph in here. I'll put them in par- paragraph by paragraph. I can't, I can't really, uh, let's see. All right, well, I will read it. Let's see. Control V. Oh, come on, please. There we go. Okay. Well, I'm going to read it here. And uh, I don't know what I have. I, I need, you know, what I really need to do is put it in a, a Word document. I still don't know. Just going to put it in a Word document. 
I always like to uh, have it in a Word document because then, then I can sort of uh, break it up into uh, in, in, into the uh, different scenes and different uh, aspects of it. All right, let's see. Where is my word? There it is. Okay. Oh. All right, I'm going to read it. Okay, it's called Colorful Moons. I was at an outside restaurant, a place where people were having fun. I can't remember the details about it, but or what led up to it, though. I just know there is stuff there that I have forgotten about uh, the dream and how it begins. Okay, so anyway, I was outside in a restaurant, a place where people were having fun. Okay, then someone says to me, Have you looked? at the moon tonight? I tell them, oh, I tell them, no, I haven't been able to see it. I adjust my position to look around and I see it big, bright, and beautiful. And I tell them, oh, I can see it now. And I tell them how spectacular it is. Then it changes colors and the moon, clouds, and sky look as if uh, uh, I'm looking at them through color tinted glasses. I think the first hue I see is light purple. Then I turn and look towards the left and see the same moon all over again, but it looks bright light green. Changes color again and I see it pink, I think. If I saw it as other colors too, I'd forgotten. And I'm not certain about the order of the colors. Then there is something going on on the ground below. I was searching for something. I don't know what. I just have the sense that something is there. I see a small person, either wildlike or primitive, maybe both. I ended up with the idea that he was magical, but that might be an idea I formed after the dream. He is running through tall grass or corn, just some area where it is easy for him to hide, but hard for me to see though. Something gets snatched up. I think it is him but then it ends up being a small animal like a rabbit. Someone snatched him or it up now, and I see just a hand in the air holding this animal, but is now skinned like this person plans to eat it. I feel anxiety in myself when I see this. Okay, now that uh, that's the first dream. This is January 12th. So um, let's let's do that one, and then we'll just look at the one, well, let me read the one from January 9th because it's actually earlier. There is a seat made of wood. It looks like a tray, really with just a rim on all sides. I don't know if this is important, but it is raw wood. It doesn't look sanded or painted. I'm given the idea to teach the cat to sit on the seat. And once he is trained to sit on the seat, then I can move the seat to the water. Then the cat will know how to sit on the seat there too. I thought maybe the tray had to do with either my focus or my will. I struggle with the with ADD or attention attention deficit disorder, you know, um, which is uh, um, I'm not sure what ADD is actually. I I know that some people have it, but I mean, it's, it's sort of a lack of focus. Hi, Tim. We're uh, uh, just uh, going, doing a dawn dream. I think, uh, why, why don't we just start with this January 9th one, because it's the earlier one. But the second one is, is, is really good as a follow-up. And then, uh, um, let's see. Okay. I don't know. Remember where we were with you, Tim? Did we owe you? you there was some dream we didn't finish or, or something or not? Well, I think we did a pretty good job with it. Okay. All right. All right. Well, anyway, uh, here, here's the dream. I put it in the chat. Um, there, okay. there's, there is a seat made of wood. It looks like a tray, really, with a rim on all sides. I don't know if this is important, but it is raw wood. It doesn't look sanded or painted. I'm given the idea uh, to teach the cat to sit on the seat. Uh, then once he is trained to sit on the seat, then I can move the seat 
to the water, then the cat will know how to sit on the seat there too. I thought maybe the tray has to do maybe with either my focus or my will. Um, I struggle with ADD. Okay, so, um, you know, those are the two aspects that um, Dawn is, um, is thinking the dream might have to do with either her focus or her will. Okay, the, the will aspect is um, the active principle um, in uh, uh, which is, is something uh, often people have trouble with. And, uh, you know, uh, Dawn, I think that comes up and sometimes um, in, in, the, in the dreams of, of trying to uh, get out of a pit, you know, get out of that pit. But anyway, uh, there is a seat made of wood. So I'm wondering, Dawn, is this like a stool or a, uh, say, a bench, a small bench, you know, um, uh, seat? Uh, I'm, I'm thinking it is, it, it has like, like a tray. Oh, it looks like a tray, but it, it does, is something, yeah. but you In still, my mind, I know it's the seat, but it looks like a tray. Okay. It's a tray, but it is something that we sit on. It's, it's really the, um, the flat part of a chair. Okay. And it, um, it is a, a tray with, with a rim on all sides. So it is, um, uh, you, you know, it it is almost a container. It's slightly a container. It has a slight rim on the all sides. So it, it it's sort of defined and, and the rim, you know, is a slightly above the uh, uh, the seat area. Now we, um, it is, now here's the other thing. It is raw wood, not sanded or painted. So it's come straight from the tree. So it's very related to uh, the, um, the tree in its natural uh, uh, aspects. In other words, it doesn't have much to do with um, being refined uh, by ego. You know, if you were to sand it or paint it, that would, that would be the ego applying a lot of attention to it. In this case, the ego is not applied much attention to it other than shaping it, you know, and uh, um, it doesn't have um, uh, legs. So it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a legless chair, okay? Now, um, but it is a chair. There's, we absolutely no doubt that it's a chair. Now, um, the, the, the fact that it, it is uh, uh, not sanded or painted, again, has something to do with it is it is is very related to nature. It, it is related to the tree and the rooted thing, but it um, is uh, not been worked over by the conscious mind. Now, um, we're given the idea to teach the cat to sit on the seat. Okay, then once. He is trained. Now, this is a male cat. Now, uh, uh, this is, uh, remember the, the cat man? Cat man, what was the name of that, that dream? Cat man something. You know, he, uh, what did the cat man do? Uh, or somebody became a cat man or something. And uh, uh, we, we want to teach the cat to sit on the seat. And once he is trained to sit on the seat, then we can move the legless chair to the unconscious. And then the cat will know how to sit on the seat there too. So the idea here is, is this. I think it is, um, it is uh, to um, have uh, this animus figure this instinctive animus figure, the male cat who's come up in, in uh, other dreams of cats. I mean, of, uh, <laughs> not, I'm not talking about our cat. I, you know, I'm, uh, she has come up in other of Dawn's dreams of, of the, uh, uh, the, this male cat 
which which is sort of a um, sort of a Charles like uh, in inner figure. Okay, Charles has inner figures who who are elemental, who are animal uh, have an animal uh, aspect. Okay, but now what's interesting is this this legless chair uh it, it, that that uh, uh that seems uh you, you know to have a frame around it so it, it seems almost like it's a it, it's a um a painting with frame but it's a it's a legless chair now we want the animus to be connected with this rooted thing so now here is a an idea of us that um is is going to uh, is to improve our focus and to improve our will. Okay, that that's what uh, Dawn says in the last part. That it seems to that that this this legless chair is uh, related to something to improving um, the outer um, consciousness, focus, and will. Uh, will ability to act and um the the way that this happens is that the animus and this um uh, rooted thing the same thing that symbolizes the tree or the feminine rooted thing need to be associated so this feminine rooted thing in us and the uh and the uh the um some somewhat undifferentiated animus represented by the cat need to have a closer connection so the feminine rooted thing in us and our animus need to have a good uh, relationship they need to be associated and then once we um uh, have ha they have a good relationship in the outer world then they can have a good relationship in the inner world we're going to take them to the uh to the water and then uh so then we will have a good relationship with uh with the with our feminine uh, uh with uh, with the feminine within us and the male animus both in the outer world and the inner world and that this is um sort of a comment it, once this happens we have a good relationship with the feminine and the masculine uh, uh, the animus in the inner outer world and the inner world, then um, uh, the fact that we tend to be a little unfocused, uh, sort of, and and, and the, our ability to act uh, will um, become uh, enhanced. Uh, you would think that it would be too. You know, absolutely. Um, what do you, what do you think, uh, Tim? Say, Don, what do you mean by this? He lifted a sick child in the air. Oh, oh, that's in the, that's in the, uh, is that in the first dream? That's what yeah. the cat man did in a previous dream. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah. I, he lifted a, a sick child. What, what, what was the title of that book? Or, I mean, that dream, uh, cat, I mean, Dawn. It was Cat Man Does Something. Oh, okay. I'd have to go back and look. All right. Well, never that. mind. Yeah, I, I'll find it. Sorry. Oh, but go ahead, Tim. I'm sorry. Well, boy, I see this as a really mythic kind of idea. I think you're, you're on to it. I'm, I'm thinking of the tray as being a kind of mechanism for serving. Mm -hmm. So using the focusing on the will and the, the focus um, is maybe a way of bringing together these capacities to serve the world or to serve the people on the outside or something like that. Um, it's all very fuzzy to me, but, but I really like what you said about the, um, the natural elements and the, the feminine um, so the only, the only thing I think is missing is this instinctual part. The cat is, is somehow really connected to the feminine spirit. 
you know, you think about the cat arising out of the out of the Egyptian religion. And in fact, my manager wrote a book about the cat and the woman um, using all these images from art history and particularly the Egyptian influence in Western culture and so forth. So I'm trying to make sense of that, but that's what I've got to add. Uh, well, that's a, we, we, it's certainly, uh, I, after, as soon as we're done, I would like to just look at the uh, next stream, but Charles, what do you think about it? Um, are we, is this all one dream here? No, the, the one on January 9th about the, we're gonna look at that one first. Okay. okay. Which is about the tray uh, that, that we're going to, it's sort of a legless chair that the, the cat, uh, that she's going to treat train the male cat to, yeah cat man keeps you safe it was called uh um but uh go ahead uh, charles what do you think um or, i mean I, I really don't know um i'm trying to let something come to me but it's it's kind of difficult um it uh, I don't know. I mean, is a is a cat a sort of favorite animal for Dawn? Th does she care about a particular cat as much as I care about a hamster or a guinea pig? Well, she had this uh, dream called "Cat Man Keeps You Safe." She says, "I see Zeus walking along the street." Zeus is a kid who used to play with my son when he lived across the street from us. I see he's lost so much weight and looks uh, worn. He didn't look like the same kid even in the face. He seems like he's terrified of something. So I ask what is wrong. Then there is this guy. He's going to help Zeus feel less afraid. They are now on the balcony and he tells Zeus that he is safe and picks him up and holds him up over his head. And I saw that what they were doing was even more miraculous than I had first understood as I realized his feet were not even on the balcony, but he was floating and, and needed nothing to hold him up. Now, now the cat man, it, it, uh, on his skin, there were cat markings like stripes or, uh, and the markings, uh, uh, you, you know, it, it, he just made her think of a, a Rihanna video, but Basically, cat man keeps you safe. So that's what we know about the cat uh, in, in Dawn's dreams. Is he is a um, he is one who um, is is a almost a superhero. You know, he, he holds um, uh, this this emaciated uh, masculine part of, uh, of of Dawn that is worn out lost a lot of weight and very sick and he comes in like um like uh, uh just this either the super animus or even the self and 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 bears him up bears zeus up and then um his uh he he, he doesn't even i mean he he his feet don't even touch the ground so anyway that's does that help anything about the cat, uh, Charles? Wait, just the oh, image. Uh, oh, I was just saying, does that help you with the image of the cat? That he's uh, it's almost a superhero. Um. I, I, I don't know. Um, it just seems like that it's, I don't know, some type of autonomous force that there has to be a, um, a placement of it in order 
for it to, um, I don't know, to be into the water. Um, I'm just, I don't know. I mean, I, I feel like there's something here uh, pretty important, but I just can't, I don't know. It's just not coming to me. Well, I would just say, let, let me just give you this suggestion is uh, that um, this, this rooted thing, the, the tray, which, um, you know, uh, uh, Tim said has something to do with, um, say, almost like, uh, like um, the grail. Now, uh, the grail uh, was, um, in, in some pictures, was pictured as a tray, as a flat bowl. You know, I mean, it was sort of this uh, uh, bowl. And it, it's it's something that um, uh, is a uh, it, it is a symbol of of the cornucopia, you know that that thing that um, is is uh, going to provide um, uh, all our needs, and yet it is also a, a place to um, to uh, it, it is a our seat. Our seat is this. A uh, rooted thing. Now, the the cat man. What we need to do is have a relationship between uh, the wood part of ourselves, the rooted part of ourselves, and the the cat animus, this striped, uh, and incredibly powerful uh, uh, animus figure who is is a is like a tiger like more than a cat. It's very tiger-like. And uh, once there is a relationship in the outer world between uh, the cat and the rooted thing, and we have perfected it, then the same relationship can be mirrored in the inner world, the one that's near the water. So then, uh, then as above, so below. Um, our outer world uh, and, and our active principle, our uh, ability to uh, act with will and to be focused, to be goal-oriented or task-oriented or uh, to be uh, one who does things and uh, accomplishes things in the outer world, uh, then we will be able to accomplish things and be uh, uh, some... Uh, you, you know, do something in the inner world too. I mean, that there'll be uh, somewhat, so the inner world and the outer world will be strengthened by the relationship of the rooted world, uh, unsanded, unvarnished, unpainted, and, 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 the, and these, this tiger-like animus uh, in the inner world and the outer world and the inner world. So I don't know if that helps, Charles. Um, Kat, what do you think about this uh, aspect? Because uh, she says, uh, remember at the end, she says, I think that this has to do with um, a, a struggle that Dawn has with focus and the ability to act. Um, well, what I think of, I actually see the tray as an altar actually and an altar is a point of focus and creating sacred space and on your altar you put whatever on there what that whatever you need help with and it's the repetition of creating sacred space or creating rituals whatever to help you um whatever it is you want to do so not only are you as above so below but you are literally um going within you're meant to go with the, a reverence a, a a sacredness inside and know that whatever it is you do in that altar that you will have change in the outer world so and it's interesting that tim brought up about the egyptian 
um, goddess Bass basically is the goddess of music and of mental healing. So there's that as well. So um, either way, you're invoking and forming relationship. And the more you do it, it builds up like a frequency. You have to show up. The more you show up, the more you get out of it for your benefit. So, I mean, that's what it says to me, basically. And the water is the fact of the the consciousness um you know that's what autism that are you know yeah. for a, a deepening yes the deepening aspect uh in, anytime the the water so there's something about water that is uh all always uh, when the water is near uh it, it, it's just a, a an aspect that it is deep and yet we can go down into it but uh it, it ta- it's not the air world you know it, it is is foreign to uh, uh to uh air breathing uh animals you know but that's beautiful that it is the altar okay so um you you know uh young said one time that we should all be uh, living tabernacles. You know, uh, that means a uh, a moving temple. Okay, so uh, so our altar aspect, the altar, uh, the place uh, of sacredness within us, and it's and here the sacredness is linked with with wood, with rooted things that are not. That our uh, their woodness is emphasized, uh, and uh, uh, the uh, that, that they're they're going to be related to the savior. Now, in the previous stream, the cat was the savior or the redeemer. So this uh, rooted aspect is going to be related to the redeemer. So the redeemer, the male redeemer who I think Dawn really is, is something uh, that, that is a, 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 a shows up in your dreams a lot. This, this male re- redeeming thick uh, is uh, associated with the, um, with, with the, uh, with the, the sacred rooted feminine, you know, now, now the cat tends to be um, uh, a a feminine aspect as related to the dog, but I think for in, in dawn, it it, it is um, it, it's something that is is uh, closer to the feminine than than a wolf would be, but it is um, it, it is definitely has the heroic quality. Uh, uh, this one who holds. Zeus up in the air, the sick child, you know, uh, is, is there's an aspect uh, that's reminiscent of Charles, um, uh, ever present hamster in this dream. Now, um, why don't I, I, I quickly, I, I'm just going to uh, send this a second dream. I, you know, Dawn, I thought this one was January 12th, <laughs> but it's December 28th. So, so I did get them mixed up after all. <laughs> okay. But I'm, I'm going to uh, put this in the, uh, uh, let, let's see here. That was so wonderful, Kat. You know, I'm going to put this in the chat. See if I'm uh, missing anything. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, the visual part of this, as opposed to the ideas that came across, uh, it was seeing the tray slid into the water. I can't see who is moving it, though. But now, would the cat sit on on the tray if it was slid into the water don you think uh i mean what is the how would the cat sit on the tray in the water uh, near the water if it was slid into the water is he is the cat going to go under the water too you think 
I'm sorry, could you say that again? Yeah, okay. Now, now you said here that um, uh, the, uh, that the uh, idea that came across was the tray was being slid into the water. I couldn't see who was moving it though. Now, do you mean it was slid under the water or across the water? There was like a barrier, I guess, like you would see if it was an in ground swimming pool or something. So yeah. You're like on the cement and you're crossing, and then the tray goes over into the water. And I didn't actually see the cat when I saw things. I just, um, that was just, you know, how ideas go with it. So, yeah. Well, the tray was going to go in the water, but it, the idea was that eventually the cat would be associated with it there too i mean that was the idea of training them in the outer world do you think it says uh um i was given the idea to teach the cat on this sit on the seat then once he is trained to sit on the seat then i can move the seat to the water then the cat will know how to sit on the seat there too but but the cat isn't sitting on the seat but we we've at least moved it to the water and so if the cat, yeah. yeah, okay. I suppose he's just supposed to follow. Supposed to follow, point. yeah. But I think it, it does have a relationship. And, and uh, I think both Tim and, uh, and uh, um, Pat were very uh, helpful here is uh, the idea of the, of the tray being, uh, you know, Tim first has sort of alluded to the fact that it was related. Uh, you know, I think that what you were saying, Tim, it's it's sort of like the tray. I was thinking what you meant was sort of like the tray as grail, as the you know we are all the living grail, is what Meister Eckhart said one time. You know, but but the tray, uh, the the grail that Joseph of Arimathea uh, brought to to Britain was uh, was a was a tray you know it was just more of a, a very shallow bowl you know it, it later became a chalice you know but that was not the one that joseph of arimathea uh, brought at first it was more of a um it, of, of a of a stone uh, shallow bowl like a tray you know um well well let's look at this second dream really quickly i mean we don't have to um go We'll see how we'll just spend some time on it because I thought this one was January 12th after that one, but this one is actually December 28th, so it was before a couple of weeks before. But it's it's really worth uh reading. Um, let's see here, okay. All right, um, Tim, Tim, do you want to read it or I, I can read it? It's uh, it starts uh, with um. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's called Colorful Moons. Colorful Moons. I was at an outside restaurant, a place where people were having fun. I can't remember details about it or what led up to it, though. I just know there is stuff there I have forgotten about, the dream and how it begins. Then someone says to me, have you looked at the moon tonight? I tell them, no, I haven't been able to see it. I adjust my position to look around and I see it big, bright, and beautiful. I tell them, oh, I can see it now. And I tell them how spectacular it is. Then it changes colors and the moon, clouds, and sky look as if looking through colored tinted glasses. I think the first hue I see is a light purple. Then I turn and look towards the left and see the same moon all over again, but it looks bright, light green. It changes color again and I see pink, I think. If I saw it as other colors too, I've forgotten it and I'm not certain about the order of the colors. Then there's something going on in the ground below. I was searching for something, I don't know what. I just have the sense that something is there. I see a small person, either wild-like or primitive, maybe both. I ended up with the idea that he was a mad, he was magical, but that might be an idea I formed after the dream. He's running through tall grass or corn, just some area where it was easy for him to hide, but hard for me to see through. 
something gets snatched up. I think it is him, but then it ends up being a small animal like a rabbit. Someone snatched him or it up and now I see just a hand in the air holding this animal, but now it is skinned like this pl person plans to eat it. I feel anxiety in myself when I see this. This is um, uh, just this wonderful contrast uh, of the uh, of the of the, the the vision of the moon. Let's just talk about the vision of the moon first. Um, okay, we're we're outside. At uh, this kind of reminds me of Tim, your dream earlier. Uh, we're we're out. It's an outside restaurant, so it's this. It's sort of a a, a place where people gather. And just sit and watch the world go round. They want to enjoy the uh, uh, the out, outdoors, but they also want to just sit and socialize. You know, Alan Watts, you know, the Zen uh, teacher yeah. said that said his practice was to eat with other people. That was his uh, his religious practice. <laughs> sort of a, 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 a ever-going ever tea ceremony. And, and it's a place where people are having fun. I can't remember the details, okay? But um, uh, anyway, this is, this is the setting of the dream. And then in this setting of people having fun, uh, just sitting outside, uh, enjoying uh, nourishment and company, someone says to me, have you looked? at the moon tonight. I said, no, I haven't been able to see it. Okay. But then now if we adjust our viewpoint, we haven't been able to see the moon. But then we adjust our viewpoint and we look around. And it is incredibly uh, uh, it, it is it, it, it is very powerful. It, the moon Okay, now the moon is this, um, uh, uh, the light of, of evening, the light of night. So it is the, it is a, a it is not the, the desiccating light of, of the noonday sun. You know, it is a soft uh, light uh, of really the unconscious. You know, I mean, it's, uh, uh, it, it, it is a light that illuminates the darkness, but doesn't overwhelm the darkness. The darkness and the light are in balance. So it's a place where, uh, where uh, darkness and light can coexist. Now they can't do that in the noonday sun. So this, this is a more human, human uh, time of night. And uh, now, now you would think that noon would be a little more human, but it, it is, it's too literal. It, it doesn't uh, possess uh, the, the realm of, of uh, the imaginal, you know. Now it is big, bright, and beautiful. And now suddenly, conscious, ego consciousness, oh, I can see it now. And, and we, we, uh, uh, are, are really just rhapsodizing about how spectacular it is. I mean, the ego consciousness is, is overwhelmed by, by uh, how beautiful it is. Up until now, we haven't been able to see it. Now we're able to see it now because we adjusted our viewpoint. And we adjusted our viewpoint after an inner figure uh, suggested to us that we should look for it. And so when we adjusted our position and looked for it, there it is. So the inner figure uh, suggested, made this suggest suggestion, we uh, altered our viewpoint and there it is. And we now, for the first time, seem to realize how magnificent it is. Okay, now the, uh, the moon is, is not only magnificent uh, as, as, a, as the light, of, of the darkness. But it also now, it seems to take on the feeling function, okay? Now, uh, anything that is, is colors is related to the feeling function. 
Okay, let's talk about the colors. The first color is purple. Well, purple is a combination of blue and red. So it would be the two, um, uh, uh, the two conscious functions of thinking and feeling. So purple, you know, is a royal color. So it's it's really the marriage of the king, and the uh, and the queen. You know, it's it's blue and red. Okay. Now then, we turn to the left. Okay. Uh, and there is this the uh, sensate moon, the one that is is green. You know, so now it is a sensate color. And then it changes color again. And it is pink, okay? And uh, you see other colors too. Now pink is a color is is a mixture of red and white. But um, you know, the one function that we haven't discussed is intuition, you know, uh, and so I don't know, but um, it's it's the uh, the purple is is a combination of two colors, blue and red, and uh, and uh, uh, then uh, uh, the, then the, there's the sensate green, and then there is a pink is a is a combination of red and white. Uh, so it's a, it's it's it is a uh, combination of rubedo and albedo. You know, which would be spirit and uh, and and uh, eros. You know, so it's a, it's a it's logos and eros really. I mean, if you if you think the logos is white and the, and the um, eros is red, in the other case you you have uh, 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 red uh, the the per the royal colors of the king. Uh, who is, is blue and, and the queen who is red. Okay, but anyway, um, uh, that, that's the first aspect of the dream. Just it, this wonderful uh, connection based on a suggestion from a, an inner character uh, 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 with the moon and realizing how magnificent it is for the first time. And then also realizing that contained within it is, is all four functions in some way or another. You know, so it, it has this uh, connection with uh, with the um, with wholeness, but differentiated wholeness, differentiated wholeness. You know, uh, the wholeness of all four functions. So now, now the idea is in in the inner world, there really is no need for functions. You know, Young said that um, ego consciousness came about through the um, through the emergence of the four functions in in consciousness, okay, and and really what happens is one is always left behind. So if you leave one behind in the inner world and three emerge into the outer world, suddenly you have separated yourself from nature, and now you have ego consciousness, which no other animal does, you know. Uh, and so uh, the idea, though, is one of those uh, is left in the inner world. And OK, but anyway, um, that, that's that's sort of this uh, idea of 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 uh, we suddenly for the first time notice the the balance between darkness and light that live in coexistence, the coolness of the light of the moon. But then it also is filled with the with um, uh, the the uh, vibrance of color, you know, uh, which you know, I'm Tim. You probably know more about colors, colors, colors than anyone, you know. But um, now, now, okay, that's the first aspect, and, it, and it's it's un unbelievably positive. Okay, now there's something else going on. Okay, we've had this wonderful image of uh, of, of the. Uh, uh, of of a of an orienting character, one that uh, you you know uh, rivets and uh, also is is something that is is stands behind us and and makes us uh, gives us a, a, an anchor. You know, this is an anchor. This moon, spectacular, magnificent moon, and and its colors is an anchor for us. Okay, 
But then uh, we go back down now into a, a, a somewhat different uh, level, okay? And, and this is where ego consciousness is noticing. Um, now, I think here it is noticing something about the instinctive, uh, our, our, our body life or something. There's something going on. I'm searching for something. Now, this is, again, uh, this comes up at where uh, Dawn has to save something, you know, or something has to be saved. And uh, um, there is a, a, a tiny person, either wild or primitive, maybe both. And they are um, related to the magical world. Now, you, you know, the magical world is the world of psyche. You know, uh, what Jung said is, is what um, the ancients called magic, we call psyche. Uh, and he is, um, he's present, yet he's trying to hide from ego. But we know he's there. You know, we know he's there. And then... Um, so, so there's that, that, that little magical vision. And then comes up the last part. Something snapped it up. Now, so this magical, uh, there's been these two magical visions here. And then there is something within us that is sort of a killing thing, you know. And it, it snatches up uh, or it snuffs out some, uh, some development. There's something trying to develop in the unconscious and it gets snuffed out. And uh, uh, it, 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 it wasn't necessarily the magical man, but it's, it's a, uh, they snatch up the rabbit and then they suddenly, there's a hand holding it that now it, it is skinned and ready to eat. Uh, and so it's going to, uh, it's, it's a predator uh, uh, that, um, that, that killed this little magical being within us and is, is, has killed it and is going to uh, consume it for its own purposes. You know, some, what of a, a willful uh, destruction or something like that. But it, it is, it may, gives us great anxiety uh, when we uh, see it. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, anyway, um, that's just a start uh, on that. Uh, Tim, what do you think? Well, man, I haven't, I haven't gotten to the second part yet, but, yeah. but I'm just fascinated with the first part. Yeah. In fact, you know, right before we started tonight, I was just out standing outside gazing at this big glorious moon that we have tonight. Beautiful. I yeah. mean, it's the same moon over here in Iowa. It was, yeah. I noticed it. It's yeah, unbelievably the same, brilliant. Uh, you know, to me, this is such a magical moment to be, to be in the presence of this amazing uh, celestial object. Yeah. And I think of the colors, uh, there's, a, there's an interesting thing that happens with light, which is opposite to the way that colors work on paper. So when you have a bunch of different colors on paper and you add them together, it gets darker and darker. And with light, the more colors you add, the more light it becomes. And, um, you know, coming from the theater, when you use stage lighting, you, if you just flood the stage with brilliant white light, everything looks flat. But if you take different colors and add blue and red and, and flesh color, um, you get this really kind of magical deep look that, um, that really makes the, the, the movement on the stage really come alive. And the interesting thing is, she said, there, she said in the note here, I don't remember seeing yellow. Well, yellow is the color of daylight. And so it makes perfect sense that, that in this um, Luna world, there would be no daylight. And it's accessed by turning to the left. And so, uh, being unaware, you know, here here we are in the in this sort of uh, outdoor restaurant uh, in the in the middle of social interaction, and somebody says, "Oh, have you seen the moon?" 
and all of a sudden it becomes apparent. So there's this connection to the other world, the upper world that floods us with a kind of new perspective on everything. And man, I'm so I'm so taken with that image that I don't want to move on to the second part. No, so. don't. The, the, <laughs> the, the second the second part is is something. Uh, but the colorful moons. Are, that's why I say I that that was myself too. But that brings up this troubling aspect. What what stands in the way of the colorful moon becoming us and becoming part of us? You know, it seems to be this uh, that this that there's an aspect in us that is too literal, that is 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 only concerned with um, uh, devouring. So it, it could be the devouring father, it could be the devouring mother, something that is inhibiting us. The one who eats up the growing thing or that that innocent aspect of us. Uh, what, what do you think, Charles? Um, I don't quite know. Um, one thing that I wanted to kind of uh, clarify was like, so if I'm reading it correctly, that, you know, Dawn was there looking at the moon and then she looks down and there's this person and then they're in the tall grass with the corn, like, were you up on a balcony or something? Um, I was just curious, like, or like, where was this tall grass in relation to you? Um, I don't know, I'm just trying to, visualize it um, and I don't I mean I really I don't know I, I think the most interesting part is that she feels anxiety when this animal is it's, it's held uh, or skinned and you know Ooh, it's startling well, it's like, what is what does this animal represent to her? Um, you know, I'm someone that uh, I think maybe I have more of a relationship and a liking for prey animals. And maybe Dawn sees this animal as being related to her and that she feels like she could be like snatched up. Uh, or an innocent part of her. Yeah, or so, I mean, that she yeah. would be preyed upon. Because that does makes me it makes me think of that might be part of how a negative kind of animus interaction could go um, to be sort of, you know, hunted by the arrows of this, uh, of an animus, um, because that's a pretty common kind of masculine symbol. And uh, yeah, it just makes me think that this could be a sort of negative animus and interaction uh, being sort of preyed upon. Um, that's part of the dream I was looking at. Well, I mean, let's just put it this way. If it was the positive animus, the one who brings meaning in, it would have enhanced the vision of the moon. Okay. But what it does is it kills the image of the moon. So uh, this is what the animus does, uh, the negative animus. The positive animus, the higher animus, is to provide meaning to uh, a symbol. And you can't uh, get a better symbol than the eternal moon, the one that's filled with colors. And yet he does not. The high, this is the lower animus. And the, and the lower animus, his trophy is to take that growing furry thing within us uh, that is helpless, 
within us and to to catch it and then to immediately uh, take its uh, fur or its skin it, you know, which is is a is a horrific thing. You know, it's one thing to see uh, the the pelt of a wolf, but it's another thing thing to see the wolf without the pelt. You know, it, it's it's uh, horrifying. Cat, uh, what do you uh, think? You you were just on fire here. Um, um, I'm really sort of really fascinated by the moon and I think of those toys like a kaleidoscope that you look and you see all the beads and you, you turn it and then you make all these shapes and I can't help but feel that the the moon in this is actually interactive the more you look at it the more it changes um, for you and like um, and, and yeah that's pretty powerful that's very sort of awe-inspiring but then to look down at a little primitive person uh, wild or primitive I'm not quite sure about that but, the, but it feels it may be a magical being it runs into the small grass, corn, you know, somewhere to hide. It's hard for me to see. I'm, I'm, there's something in that actually. And I can't help but feel uh, like um, over here, we have a lot of fairy tradition, the fae type of thing, the little people. And then, it sort of, I suppose, morphs into this rabbit or something, and then is snatched up. But then a lot of stuff with the fae or the fairy is that, that they have been, um, you know, they have been sort of, their habitat has been decimated so they they do sort of run and hide as such but with and i i do think it's something to do with um like what you were saying craig about taking this small thing and then skinning it and but in some part of me can't help but feel it could be a a positive thing depending on the way you look at it. Like what we've got in the early reflection of the moon. Hadn't seen it then when you saw it and then paid it attention as such, it then changed color. This thing with the, this little being or something turning into some sort of rabbit and then it's been held up and then it's been skinned. I can't help but feel that there is a positive to that in, in the fact of survival, the need to eat and everything else. But I can see where you would feel anxiety and I can see where there is a feeling of it being distorted, the actual true meaning of it, if you see what I mean. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I was trying to uh, find the 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 idea though is, um, I think we we um, let, let me just um, I'm I, the positive aspect of this uh, is is uh, um, now. Can you state again what you think the positive aspect of the uh, of, of, well, of the, we need of the to... man holding up this flayed? Yeah, and uh, I mean, the thing, the thing is, at the end of the day, we need food to eat. Yes. And a rabbit is, you know, for a lot of people back in the day, rabbit, and that was um, something very accessible sort of thing because of, you know, that they're very fertile, you know, the fertility sort of aspect yes. of that as well. And um, so, you know, to 
to eat, <laughs> you know, the, that of a, a rabbit sort of thing, as a survival aspect, is is a positive yes. thing rather than like, um, you know, which is completely different to fox hunting and stuff, yes. which I know a lot of people, you know, over here there's you know pros and cons for it all and I don't really want to get into that but there is that aspect of it as well whereas holding something up and skinning it is taking responsibility for I mean it's kind of like um Oh God, I'm on to say, but it's like it's it's so sort of tiny. It's trying to sort of form. Um, I suppose it's like taking responsibility for what we. It's kind of like being a meat eater. You can't not know that animals are slaughtered in order for you to eat meat. Do you see what I mean? Yes. So there is that aspect of it. Um, but yeah, I can, I suppose it depends what you do with it and how you go with it, actually, and to find the deeper meaning of the, the hunter, um, if that's the intention as such, as a trophy thing with disrespect, you know, or is it a hunter thing? and providing food for sustenance and um, survival. It depends, again, how you look at it. Well, I think one of the, 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 the first of all, that my wife, uh, you know, we have a, uh, we feed the birds here and we have a hawk, you know, that comes here and every once in a while, it's here a lot and it'll take one of the birds and my wife feels really bad. You know, but I said, you know, if, uh, if 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 the wonderful world of Disney was to do a documentary on the poor hawk that is starving, you know, <laughs> one of the high points of the of the of the documentary would be where it catches the uh, the bird, you know. But but on the other hand, one of uh, a thing that that is sort of uh, uh, you, you know, I think it sort of startled me, filled her with anxiety is he holds it up in the air in his hand, like almost in triumph, you know? And, uh, and the fact that if you, uh, you, you know, um, the Kalahari Bushmen, when they kill something, uh, they, they will quick put a, a, um, a, uh, uh, a cover over its, its head uh, to, to calm the animal and quiet the animal. And also, uh, at, at a, as out of great respect, and then they will say a prayer, you know, of thanks, not uh, to this animal, but to the master animal of, of the of the species, uh, for uh, allowing one of its its children, yeah, uh, to be consumed, you know. Hey, I got to take off here. Sorry. Okay, sure. Okay, we'll see you later, Tim. Right. Thank you. Okay. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, um, thank you, Tim. I just wanted to show to some of these. Uh, I just have a few uh, moons here. Uh, Charles, if you want to get a dream ready too, uh, we can go out on that one. But I. Uh, yeah, I, I have one that was not sure. Yeah, okay. Well, uh, here's, here's the purple moon, you know, and then there's the green moon, and there's the pink moon. Now, all of those are just absolutely beautiful. But, but I think the thing is, this beautiful image uh, is um, that there, uh, I don't know. I think the anxiety that Dawn feels in the second half of the dream has to do with um, the male aspect, the man's hand, you know, that is... Um, is uh, catching something within her she doesn't want caught. Something that she feels uh, a, a, a compassion for because it's hiding. It doesn't want to be caught. 
and it's caught, immediately killed, uh, the helpless, defenseless thing, and then not just killed, but flayed. Mm. And then the flayed body held up mm. is, is somewhat. Uh, so anyway, I, I, let me just uh, kind of quickly summarize is there's this image, this beautiful image of, of, the, of the colors of, of, the, uh, of the light that is balanced with, does not overwhelm the darkness. And darkness doesn't overwhelm it. Yet it, it shines uh, almost radiant godlike, And it's, it's magnificent. We've never seen it before. The inner figure points it out to us. And then there is this aspect of what separates us from that uh, magnificent god of the moon, the moon goddess, is uh, this um, sort of a, a triumphant uh, pillar of the innocent thing within us. Mm -hmm. Something like that. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, it, it, both of those dreams are wonderful, Don. I, if if uh, we're here Wednesday, I'd like to uh, sort of uh, go over both of them and uh, um, with some reflection after a couple of days. But uh, Charles, why don't you go ahead with your dream? Okay. Uh, I was in a neighborhood where I had a house and I was standing alongside a truck right by my house. And there are many cars parked on both sides of the street. And so it kind of created this narrow choke point. And as I was standing by this truck, a bunch of cars tried to go through going both ways. And it created a problem. It sort of there's basically a traffic jam and none of the cars can go any further. And all of a sudden, an extremely large crane that was in the yard of a house nearby fell over. And a smaller crane was like, they're trying to get the crane back up. And a smaller crane pulled on the large crane and then a truck pulled on the small crane in order to get it to stand back up. But during the whole process, somehow my house got caught on the crane's cable and flung it up in the air and turned it upside down. It was hanging on the cables of the crane and I could see all my pets inside. Now it's extremely distraught and upset and crying very heavily. And eventually uh, the house was put back down on the ground but I don't actually think any of my animals were that upset by the whole thing. They were bothered. Okay, that's the dream. All right. Yeah. Okay, uh, now I'll, I'll have to go over the, 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 the logistics here, but um, we're, we're in, in a house and we're standing by a truck that is right by our house. Okay, now uh, there, it, it's, it's just a two lane street but there are cars parked on both sides of the street, which sort of create a choke point, okay? So it's very congested. You know, there, there's just an idea of that, that um, uh, it, it's very busy, but there's, that, that there's, um, there's not enough room for the flow of the busyness. And, and where, where are all these people parking? Why, why are they all parked? You know, I mean, there's just, it seems like a, I, I don't know, you know, in, in university towns, I see this, you know, every, every, or college towns, you know, uh, every, uh, for the students, you know, park on both sides of the street and there's hardly even room to drive through the middle, you know, but th then there's all kinds of cars trying to drive through, through the thing. So it's a, it's a place where, uh, you, you, you know, uh, everyone's trying to park, everyone's trying to move, it's, it's a place of streets, you know, I mean, uh, the, 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 it, it's owned by cars, you know, <laughs> the whole place is the, 
is the car city. If, if you're not driving a car, you're parked on the street. Okay. Now, um, a, a, uh, a very large crane falls over. Okay. So um, I, I would guess that this crane maybe is uh, uh, maybe 100 feet high or 50 feet or something very high, you know, and it falls over. Okay. Now, a, a, a smaller crane and a truck are, are trying to pull up the crane. Now, did, did just the boom of the crane fall down or did the whole crane that was upright tip over on its side like that? Or did yeah, they... it's the whole thing tipped over. Okay. And now the small crane and the truck are, are trying to pull the, the crane up like this again. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So um, how did the, your house get suspended hanging in the air? Um, I guess there were like, so the crane that fell over had like long cables like attached to it and they must have got like wrapped around my house when it fell over. And so when they pulled the crane up, my house went up because okay. it was connected to the cables of the crane. All right. Okay. Well, there, it, there's this very towering thing. A, a very towering thing in this very congested place. This this place uh, that is, um, you, you know, it's somewhat chaotic. You know, uh, the, the, there's no order, no pattern. Everyone, it's just catch as catch can. People are going uh, to, you know, up the street, down the street. There's no room. No one's following any rules. Everybody's parking. It's just this sort of a place of chaos. And in the place of chaos, the tower falls over, the tower, the great crane, you know. Now, um, in, in the process, so so people are trying to pull the crane back up. So they do pull the crane up like this, you know. But when they pull us up, pull it up, they they pull our house up with it. Okay, so now we're st we're standing on the ground, and we're looking up, and here is our house suspended hanging in the air you know this place of uh, uh what, what would you think if that if that happened you're you're looking uh at your house your home where you live and especially where all your uh, uh all these these um animals that you tend and care for are in that in in great danger because they're suspended very high in the air there's a possibility that they'll all be killed if, if the if the uh, if the house falls, and uh, now now what can you describe again, Charles? Your feeling at this moment. You you said it, and I don't I don't I, I wonder if you could just repeat. Um, it. I was very distraught. I started crying very heavily. Okay. And, uh, yeah, this is this is another instance, um, Charles and. Uh, I, you don't ever do this. Uh, I mean, you rarely do this in real life. Uh, w but in the dreams, you often have these emotional outbursts. Do you do that much in outer life? Or is it just... Uh, no, it's really rare. Yeah, just but in the dream. Yeah, in the dream, it happens a lot. I think in, in outer life, there's, there's a certain amount of... Uh, not, not maybe not recently, but in the past, a certain amount of apathy and escapism. You know, I mean, uh, just uh, uh, so, somewhat of a, you know, you know, a very poor attitude. You know, is just uh, uh, if 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 you don't like the outside, you don't have to worry about it. You just pull into your shell. You know, and you don't see it. You know, you either like an ostrich sticking your head in the sand or turtle pulling its head in the shell, shell or someone goes into their bedroom and shuts the door, you know? And that was my specialty when I was uh, adolescent, you know? And uh, anyway, um, uh, we, but in the dreams, often there's a great expression of uh, the dream ego, unlike the, the real ego. 
it tends to express itself uh, uh, very emotionally. Let it does not suppress the emotions. It expresses its emotion. And in this case, it is very distraught and begins to weep. Okay. So the feeling function is, is being activated. Now, Charles, this is an this is a uh, uh, in you and me tends to be a, a issue, you know, is that the feeling function is <laughs> is fairly primitive in the outer world, you know, but in your dreams, it's not primitive in the inner world, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's very active. Okay. Now, um, can you describe again uh, how the dream ended? In other words, the house was put back down and none of the animals like, seemed that concerned. Yeah, I, I could see... As it was dangling there, I could see my animals inside. And then it kind of slowly gets lowered back down. And um, I just had a, I, I just intuitively knew that my animals didn't seem really that bothered by it. And yeah. That's it. Okay, well, let's, let's and let, let me just finish with this, is that the, the instinctive world did not seem to be now, now, see, here's the thing. You take the house, you know, the place that th this is your uh, sort of, uh, 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 you know, Timonos or whatever. This is the place of refuge for you. And it gets suspended high in the air. So it's suspended hot, far away from the earth. And in the house, it is teeming with the instinctive life. And so what we're really, uh, we're, we're not so concerned about the house we're concerned about the instinctive uh, aspects in us, which we know are the, one of the most precious aspects that we have. At least the dream ego thinks that, is that, that those are the jewels, my body. That's what I need to um, most tend to, is these, grow, these young things within me. I mean, that's what you are in the dream. You are the caretaker. The one who takes care of the starfish, the one who takes care of the baby elephants, the one who, you know, who, who has to save these instinctive aspects. And in this case, like the baby elephants, like the, like the hamster that gets swallowed by the snake, like the, uh, um, the uh, starfish that doesn't have any water, um, you, you, are, uh, you, are, you need to, you are the protector of these instinctive aspects, in some cases, godlike, you know, the starfish, you know, the baby elephants, you know, and uh, uh, they um, it, eventually it, it, it comes back down. And uh, the, the realization that we have is that the, um, uh, it is not, uh, that the instinctive world didn't seem to that concerned. Uh, what do you think, Kat? Um, yeah, it's, again, it happened to, I suppose, when you, um, it's like, like for me, it's like the, the lifting up is like you have a, a bit more of a vantage point type of thing. Um, but then obviously there is the, the panic and the horror of the animals, the, 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 the like the instinct the aspects and the things that we, we really care about but it's almost like they again they're kind of really quite strong really because they're unconcerned about the movements of um so we should we say concrete things if you see what i mean in terms of a house i mean i believe we have houses made with bricks and things like that but do you see what I mean it's kind of like that aspect it's like they, they're not concerned because it's almost like they're they're within themselves and in a, a group because you said animals they're complete within themselves and it's kind of like again it's they're fine no matter what movement's going on out and around them do you see what I mean? That's, so that's actually quite a nice 
foundation, really, if you see what I mean. Um, and that's about it of, um, that struck me um, sort of straight away. Um, how do you feel about it, Charles? When, when, when Charles gets unmuted, a cat, they're grounded within themselves. Yeah. So they don't need to be grounded on the earth. Now, yeah, Charles, uh, could you, uh, a cat would like you to, and, and I would like to hear uh, your thoughts. Um, so the street um, with the too many cars, there's, you know, I'm, I'm not, I don't want to say that it's just like, you know, energy that can't pass through and be channeled. I feel like there's more to it than that. But um, the, 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 the crane falls over. This is like somebody that, you know, they're really high up and they can see everything that's going on and it's like you're you know it's a building mechanism um that's kind of like you know it just makes you think of trying to construct and build things from up high and like Kat said you know vantage point but this maybe this is the way I'm trying to like create my life which I haven't really even been doing that so I don't know why this would be a symbol for that but so I'm trying to construct things and it just topples over so it falls apart and I'm like in a way there's a part of me that's just down and out and needs other people's help to get back upright. But in doing that, it totally like uproots like yes. my life and Beautiful. literally turns it upside down. And I just can't like, um, I just, you know, can't accept it. Um, and it really hurts, but it sh shows that, like, I guess it just shows that I'll, I'll, I'll be okay, because um, there's part of me that, you know, deep inside that has has not been affected by it. It's just going to be a kind of painful and traumatic thing to experience. That's wonderful context. Don't you think, Kat? I mean, yeah, the way definitely. The use of these mechanical things that are kind of supposed to help and actually are like a hindrance. They topple over, it gets sort of top heavy, I suppose. That's what, that's yeah, something's too over. top heavy. Yeah. And then, but again, the, the instinct. The, the, the small animals is really actually quite strong because they're um, perturbed sort of thing. Um, so it's almost like in some ways that that's where the, the need for um, the cultivation and relationship needs to develop more stronger so they grow into bigger allies. Does that make sense? And then... Um, so then you can go with that more rather than what's, again, the outside of having to do this, like the crane, move this piece over here. I think it's like what the child says, trying to create a life for yourself. And there's certain things that you have to do, perhaps on an outer level, it might be, okay, like the change of job I might have to get this qualification I might have to do that but perhaps it's actually going within with the animals and then kind of feeling as such 
what you need to do and then acting upon it rather than perhaps coming from a logical thing place of I have to do this in order to get that. Do you see what I mean? So then maybe you get into more of what you truly like as an authentic being rather than what perhaps you, you think you should like or do in order to get things done. Very, uh, it's a very human way to look at it, Kat, which I, I love the way you, you frame these things. But, but the idea is this, I think, Charles, the very large crane, the very tall crane, top heavy, there's an aspect within us that's top heavy. Okay. And, it's, and, it's, and, and everything's congested. There's no, it, you, you know, we're, our life is congested. And in the midst of uh, the congestion of our life, there's something very top heavy. You know, it, it's too tall and it doesn't have a strong enough uh, weights at the bottom for the for the height that it has you know and so thus it it, it topples over okay so so then um you, you know all the king's horses all the king's men try to uh to write this thing that doesn't have enough weight at the bottom and all the weight is up above and when it does it literally turns our world upside down and yet there is, a, a, I think, just I'm restating what you said, Charles, that there's an aspect uh, within you uh, that is not turned upside down by this. So e even though, uh, what, what, could you just tell us when you had the dream, Charles? Do you remember? It's on January 5th. January 5th. So it's, it's been since you came home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So it's sort it of... A, a, it was the night before I went up there to see you, actually. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's, it, it's just a, a beautiful statement of that there is something within us. The instinctive aspect, which is so important in your dreams. And, and this dream shows how important it is. And the more I hear about these dreams, the more I, I think I know that when we, we see these hamsters and things, they're no joke. They're that thing within you that uh, stays the same. Well, anyway, uh, th this is fun. I, you know, sometimes uh, it's it's good to just have a little little group here. So, Cat, uh, that was wonderful, uh, both on Dawn's dreams and uh, and Charles' dreams. And Dawn, another uh, a, a wonderful dream, uh, two wonderful dreams. And uh, next time, I kind of try to like to tie them together. So I'll see if I can do that. And then Charles, I'll type your dream up and we'll we'll talk a little bit more about it. Okay. Well hopefully Roy will be here next time. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. Um I hope Roy is I, I think uh, you know, dreams are supposed to be forward looking, usually. I mean, uh, you, you know, say the dreams are like this. They cast shadows in front of themselves, mm -hmm. you know, and uh uh I, I think it, Roy has been somewhat, um, I don't know. Yeah, hopefully he'll be back. So we'll see. I hope he's not disappointed in us. So anyway, well, thank you, Kat and Dawn and Charles, and we'll see you next time. Oh, thank right. you all. Thank you. Okay. You take care. Thank okay, you. take care, Kat. Bye-bye.